Hello and welcome everybody. In this video, I want to briefly touch on the effect of overvoltage on TI microcontrollers. You might assume we talk about EOS behavior leading to physical damage, but this will not be covered within this short session. Before going into the details, I want to emphasize that it is essential to check the device specific datasheet for its absolute maximum ratings and design the application the port is used in accordingly. In this example, a typical MSP datasheet is shown, mentioning the absolute maximum voltage to be applied, but also pointing to the voltage restrictions to any other pin with relation to the supply voltage. The ESD ratings are of similar importance, but because the shown HPM and CDM data mainly covers the unpowered assembly process, they are not in today's session focus as well. While the spec itself is not pretty complex, I want to jump over to the three main consequences of violating the absolute maximum ratings. The first one is that the parts are still functional but operated out of specification. So what is a typical scenario for this? For example, you supply your device with 3.3 volt as shown here on the simple bench setup leveraging an MSP430 F2274, where one of your IOs sees a voltage higher than 3.3V plus 300mV, which is the max allowed voltage to be applied to any pin. In this case, the device will not immediately show a malfunction, like high current or abnormal operation. But it is still a violation of the spec. For sure, the internal ESD protection devices will draw the current to the supply and tries to handle the stress. But finally, it is a spec violation. Now you might think this is easy and should be always considered. But often external component outputs, like from a sensor, are not fully considered across the full power supply cycle. Sometimes I always see voltages before the main supply is available. Simply because the voltage propagates through several voltage regulators, while the sensor voltage is immediately available. To demonstrate the worst case scenario, we can try to power the device backdoor via GPIO. As you can see, operation can be ok from first few, but via this unintentional supply scenario, the device operation is not predictable and any kind of soft or hard fails can happen. The reason for this is that the implemented power mesh circuits are powered via supply paths they are not made for and therefore can behave incorrect. Therefore, not only the pure supply spec must double check on application, but also the complete set of maximum operating conditions under all application use cases. Another consequence can be that the device operated out of max operating conditions and is not functioning properly anymore, but have not experienced physical damage. As an example, code execution could be wrong and write data to memory which is not intended to be written, in this out of spec usage. These effects can even be visible after a new power cycle and looks like a continuous failure but are not related to the damage. Such scenarios can be hard to reproduce and debug and therefore the emphasis is again on considering the full specification. Take a car as a simple example. If the vendor tells you to fuel it with diesel, otherwise it will not work, the vendor does not specify what happens to the car when you fuel it with petrol. The vendor simply says, make it right. The consequence is then the next level leads to an electrical induced physical damage. If proven, this was caused by a violation of the absolute max ratings. It can be called an EOS. But as said, this is not part of today's session. While we discuss scenarios and consequences of violating the absolute maximum ratings of operation, we want to give some ideas how to handle these on application level. At the end, you will get some references to the documents we touch now. One item is about the overvoltage on IO pins, especially the ones which are not continuously applicable. Think about an electromagnetic coupled energy, for example by a motor to any of your I.O. traces on the PCB. If the energy is low enough to not damage the part, but high enough to violate the max rating, it might slowly lead to a lift of the supply voltage as explained 
in the ESD diode current spec apps node. With this you apply too high voltage over longer time to the device. The best would be to prevent this over voltage conditions. But as a safety net, a simple Sino diode to the supply can be used to dissipate the additional energy and make the whole application more robust. The selection must be done according to the application requirements and characteristics, like overall power consumption, clamping behavior and power dissipation. Another way to get rid of this can be to use a power supply circuitry like the LM337, which has a good current sinking capability, if the current consumption requirements of the whole application would allow it. Wrapping up, I want to emphasize the three key points of this session, with the most important on the top. Keep the recommended absolute maximum ratings in mind for the whole life cycle of the application. Then, second item might be the best but hardest point. Try to prevent the occurrence of overvoltage scenarios by good power supply sequencing. Supply first, then the IOs. Good application design, reduced EMC coupling, but also external protection like TVS or Sino diodes. However, it has to be clear that external components come with drawbacks, like for example increased overall current consumption. Therefore, doing the prevention upfront counts. As promised, I want to highlight the links to the three different documents dealing with this topic focused on MSP devices. Hoping this will help to better understand overvoltage scenarios, their possible consequences and solutions.